This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's Phantom, Flyhawk's HMS Legion, and Kitty Hawk's Big Tiger II. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, the source for all your hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Hi, Aaron Skinner with Elizabeth Nash. Welcome to New Product Rundown. The show that peels back the shades to show you inside some of the latest kits and accessories. We start today with Airfix's all new 172nd scale Phantom FG1. This is the Rolls Royce Spay Power Jet, operated by the Royal Navy from 1966 to 1978. After the Royal Navy ceased operations with the only carriers capable of operating the Phantom, the remaining FG1s were handed over to the Royal Air Force for use as long range interceptors. Options characterize Airfix's new Phantom, including the ability to build it in flight, ready for takeoff, or stowed on the deck with folded wings. Service detail is typical of Airfix's newer kits, with a mix of recessed panel lines and rivets of various depths. The cockpit comprises a tub, with separate front and middle bulkheads, instrument panels for the pilot and rear seater, and three-part ejection seats with molded seat belts. Decals provide dials and controls for the panels and side consoles. Also sandwiched in the fuselage are detailed jet pipes that receive the short exhausts of the Spey engines. Up front are two-part intake trunks molded with the ramps and fans deep inside. The FG1's oversized intakes finish the power plants. Smartly engineered, the airframe has a separate lower panel with the nose gear bay and part of the lower wings. The upper part of the spine is a single drop-in piece so there's no seam through the finely recessed circular panels. The vertical tail is molded in one piece with a large alignment lug and fine probes. An unused tail hints that we can expect other Phantoms from Airfix. There's another hint in the inclusion of two lower wing inserts, including one with reinforcements that isn't called for in this kit. The flaps and slats are separate with optional parts to display them up or down. And there are three options for the outer wings. One designed to show the aircraft in flight, another with slats extended, and finally, one with the hinge molded in the folded position to make displaying the Phantom stowed easy. Optional plates allow the horizontal stabilizers to be set either neutral or angled for a nose up attitude. Alternate nose legs are provided to show the aircraft at its normal position or at the extreme nose high angle of attack used by the Royal Navy. The wheels show decent hub and tread detail and are slightly bulged. Other build options include having the bleed doors on the belly open or closed. An insert provides detail inside those doors. You can also choose to show the speed brakes open or closed with detail in those wells. Pose the auxiliary intakes on the rear fuselage open or closed. Extend the refueling probe and the arrestor hook. Cut marks inside the nose allow for the radome to fold against the airframe as when the aircraft was stored in the carrier hangar. Or you can open the radome and expose the radar. Phantoms always appear more menacing with a full loadout and the kit gives you plenty of choices with a center line and two wing fuel tanks four Skyflash and four AAM-9 Sidewinder missiles, four bombs, and four rocket pods. In addition to a one-piece closed canopy and multi-part open version, the clear parts include the heads-up display components and the nose gear doors, the latter presumably so you can show the landing lights in the door. Cartograph decals give markings for three Royal Navy Phantoms in extra dark sea gray over white and include a full suite of stencils. You've got to love how much Airfix crams into its kits in terms of options and build choice. Combined with top-notch instructions and smart engineering, the Phantom was a great addition to the lineup and should build into a fine replica. Flyhawk does small things in a big way, as can be seen in its new 1700 scale HMS Legion. One of eight L-class destroyers built for the Royal Navy, Legion was commissioned in December 1940. After several months escorting convoys in British waters, Legion spent the fall and winter of 1941 in the Mediterranean. It was sunk in an air attack in the harbor at Malta in March 1942. In 1700 scale, L-class destroyers are small with the hull coming in at about six inches long. It can be built full hull, but a waterline plate is also provided. Check out the finesse of the detail molded on the hull, including plates, portholes with eyebrow gutters, and even chocks molded on the bulwarks. The two-part deck has finely molded house pipes, splinter shields, walkways, and other details. Legion's superstructure is supplied by beautiful slide molded sections with hatches, portholes, and fine railings. The bridge tower with its wings and the funnel show the same level of detail. The destroyer's main armament, the four twin four inch gun turrets, comprise sharply molded casemates, tiny bases, and fine barrels. The balance of the parts are delicate and small. They include ammo lockers, ship's boats, torpedo launchers, searchlights, bollards, depth charge launchers, props, rudder, shafts, and the masts. A small PE fret supplies anchor chains, 
a cover for the flying bridge, and some supports. But this deluxe edition kit includes supplemental photo etch that not only provides a full set of railings, it also replaces the radar, front spray shield, davits, boat racks, ladders, and the funnel cap. The set also includes turn brass barrels for the four inch guns and gives brass rod to build a replacement mast. Decals and color diagrams show markings for HMS Legion as it appeared in 1941. There are whole numbers for other ships as well as Royal Navy ensigns. If you like small scale ships, Flyhawk provides you everything you need to produce a good looking model. HMS Legion is no exception. Fine scale modeler making a big deal out of small things since 1982. Here's Kitty Hawk's 132nd scale F5E Tiger II. An improvement on Northrop's F5A Freedom Fighter, the Tiger II entered service in the early 1970s. As well as being widely exported and used by more than 30 nations, the F5E was used by the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marines as an adversary or aggressor aircraft in training. Kitty Hawk's F5E box is crammed with parts, including a one-piece upper rear fuselage from just aft of the cockpit. Surface detail is very fine recessed panel lines and rivets. Similar detail marks the lower half of the rear fuselage. The forward fuselage is split vertically with cutouts to expose the gun bays for the twin M39A2 20mm cannons. The cannon bays comprise walls that double as the size of the nose gear bay, fore and aft bulkheads, ammo cans, ammo chutes with shells, and the guns themselves which feature hollowed muzzles. Controls and switches are molded on the cockpit side consoles. The cockpit also features a rear bulkhead, turtle deck with plenty of equipment, walls, instrument panel with nicely molded dials and switches, multi-part ejection seat and controls, and panel shroud. There's structural detail molded inside the gun bay doors. A separate upper panel has holes for the cannons. There's a little flash here and elsewhere, but it should be easily removed. Optional pointed and flat or so-called shark nose radomes are also included. In addition to detailed main gear and speed brake bays, the rear fuselage encloses two engines with nice front and rear fans. Oddly, no intake trunks are included. The well-molded intakes are relatively small, but will likely reveal the open interior without the addition of blinking plates. On the other hand, the exhausts look pretty good with detailed jet pipes inside shrouds. If you prefer, the kit includes optional one-piece resin jet nozzles. The thin wings feature separate flaps, ailerons, and leading edge slats. The all-moving tailplanes are molded as single parts and should be easily posable. The vertical stabilizer features a separate rudder that, like the flaps, will require modification to pose in any position except neutral. The kit supplies optional inserts to show the auxiliary intakes on the side of the fuselage open or closed. To load your Tiger II, the kit includes a pair of optional AIM-9B or 9E sidewinders, two AIM-7 Sparrows, Mark 20 Rock Eye Cluster Bombs, Mark 82 bombs, and two sizes of fuel tank. Photo Etch Brass provides a harness for the pilot, engine details, intake parts, and canopy items. In addition to the optional nozzles, the kit provides two resin pilots, one seated for the cockpit, the other standing. The clear parts supply a two-part canopy, HUD glass, and lights. The decals are a highlight of the kit and include markings for nine F5Es, two U.S. Navy aggressors, two U.S. Air Force fighters, and one each in service with South Korea, Iran, Mexico, Singapore, and Brazil. It's a variety fitting for an aircraft that's seen widespread use. It also includes stencils for the airframe and weapons. The markings and resin figures especially make this kit worth considering. We'll see how it and Airfix's Phantom go together in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner, and this message was brought to you by Somnographia. You've got to love how much Airfix crams into its kits in terms of options and build choice, combined with top engineering and top-notch instructions. <laughs> top-notch top engineering and... <laughs> Go! Something engineering. <laughs> Nine.